Hello and welcome to the first in a couple of videos adding a flight controller it's not a flight controller though is it into this boat. Now this boat is something that I've already had a look at so I'll put a link below if you want to go and uh, have a look at it. It's immense fun on its own. Uh, you don't need to put a flight controller or FPV on this to have a blast but of course I put flight controllers in most things and FPV stuff as well. In fact, you may have noticed in that review that I did actually stick a little FPV pod here just to hammer about. But I have had lots of interest in putting um, a flight controller in something like this and having a play. And I'm interested in having a play with that too. There's two main options that I'm going to explore. Uh, the first one is going to be iNav, that's going to be what we'll do in this video and probably the next one. And then I'll blow the flight controller away and we'll put Ardu Boat on it. Now the setup for things like this and for things like rovers or cars is identical. So all the stuff I'm going to go through here is going to be useful whether or not you have something like this or you have something like an RC car that you want to add functionality to. Now a couple of things to think about before we get into this. Uh, those of you that haven't watched any of my other iNav series, iNav for Beginners 2020 is definitely where I recommend you come from. If you haven't watched any of those videos, I'm going to skip over some of the basics for iNav. So I'd make sure you're familiar with how to do the basic iNav settings, things like calibrate the accelerometers, etc. Because here I'm going to really focus on the difference between a standard setup that you've seen on the channel many, 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 many times, and what you need to do to set up something like this, or a car. One of the big differences is the way the ESC works. Now, in a traditional plane ESC, you go from zero to 100% throttle in quite a linear line, and that corresponds to the low tire throttle. On something like this, there is either a reversing, or this one doesn't have a reversing ESC, but it works in a similar way, and the way it works is the middle channel position for throttle going to the top position is considered forward and from the middle channel position going to uh, the lowest position is considered reverse. So whereas on a plane 0% throttle is 0% throttle on something like this with a reversing ESC or then actually 0% throttle on the radio is actually 100% reverse. 50% throttle is don't go backwards and forwards. So that is one of the big things that you have to be careful of and one of the big things that you have to think about. Um, when you are setting something like this up, again, we're going to cover iNav in this and RD boat next. Uh, this is probably not the way that I'd start. Um, you, c you don't have to buy a boat like this. I've seen people make boats, in inverted commas, uh, from things like child's flotation devices, the kind of thing that you get for your kid when they're learning to swim at the pool. They look like little foam tombstones. Uh, you could get one of those, put a little motor at the back, or have two little thrusters each side. The more stable the better when you're playing with things like boats, particularly things like this. If it turns over and capsizes, then I'm going to have to go for a swim or a wade to go and recover it. Uh, so think about that. The more stable, the better. And also, if you're thinking about putting a flight controller in something like a bait boat, there's usually a couple of tubs at the back that you can operate by a servo. And I'll talk about that as part of the video. There are some limitations with the iNav boat and rover setup. Uh, let me cover those. At the moment when I'm recording this, this is uh, early October. The 2.5.2 code is very new. There are some very basic functionality. First of all, is there's no position hold. Uh, position hold, you don't need a position hold for a car really do you because you kind of stop and it just kind of sits there. Uh, with a boat it can be a little bit more exciting. So for example if you're in a body of water that has a current uh, there isn't a way with iNav to say keep your current position whereas with some of the other technologies there are. Uh, return to home is in a straight line as well so if your boat goes behind an obstruction on the pond or the lake or whatever it is that you're playing with it on, you turn, turn to home, it's going to try and come straight at you and potentially run aground. So ideally what you want is it to retrace the steps that you uh, use to take it out to that position. It doesn't do that yet in iNav. And the other thing is a compass is required and that again is because if it's sat still you need to know which direction it's pointing in order for it to do things like the autonomous missions or return to home. Uh, and normally with a plane because it's moving all the time you can figure out which direction it's going in. 
This is very much like a multi-rotor. It could potentially be going in any direction. So you do need a compass installed on this as well, which does mean you need to make sure it's well away from all the other high voltage electronics. Now I'm adding this because I just want to see what it's like and have a play with it. I want to put FPV on this boat. The idea is me and my buddy can chase each other. And I like the on-screen display that shows me the battery voltage flight, flight time. Some of these terms don't really work, do they, for boats? But uh, all that information around um, so that I can kind of make sure that I don't ever get in a situation where I leave my boat stranded because I've been an idiot. Uh, I'm just interested to see how easy it is set up. And I'm going to use a very cheap and cheerful flight controller to do it on. This is an Omnibus F4 Pro. This will also allow me to monitor the current cheap and cheerful GPS unit, little S bus receiver with a camera and video transmitter on here we will be good to go. So it isn't an expensive thing to do. I could have used something like a Matek flight controller, but to be honest, there's a good chance it might get wet. Now I am uh, going to coat everything uh, in conformal. Uh, conformal coating will help it resist moisture if it does get a bit wet. It's a boat, it's a good chance it will. And hopefully that will make sure that if it does ever capsize or fill with water or whatever, uh, nothing shorts out. Um, Always read the wiki because things are changing all the time. I've just covered a lot of the limitations in the current version for iNav. Go and read the wiki because it will be changing all the time and things will be improving as more people use the code and ask for particular things to be added. And finally, as I mentioned, you could easily add a servo at the back uh, into one of the spare outputs on your flight controller that could operate a servo. So you flick a switch on your radio and it drops the bait in the water. So that could be what I think most people have been asking me for is the ability to send a boat to a specific position in a lake and then kind of hit the button and drop the bait in. Now in terms of setting up the flight controller, the flight controller setup is exactly the same and all I've done is I've just followed all the wiring diagram here for the Omnibus F4 Pro that's listed in the iNav documentation. Again I'll put a link below so you can go and have a look at it. It shows very clearly how you connect up the SBUS input and it shows how you wire up the GPS. And I've just followed exactly those wiring diagrams to come up with these two connections. There's only one little trick that I've used and that is with the power for the output rail. I've changed the five volt pins so that all of the five volt pins except the one connected to the receiver are connected together. So that means that the five volts coming in from the ESC is gonna be one that's powering the rudder servo and that rudder servo isn't going to be run from anything to do with the flight controller and that will just protect the flight controller from any overcurrent and it keeps the 5 volts on here nice and clean because it's going to be running the GPS and also the receiver too. So nothing particularly clever or smart about that but hopefully these pictures have helped you see how I've got it set up for the bench. On the radio, it's a little bit more complicated. On the radio, the normal radios for these kind of things have the pistol grip, where in the middle it is neutral. Remember, the middle throttle channel value is don't go backwards and forwards. And as you pull the trigger, that's forward. And as you push the trigger away, that's usually reverse. Now, obviously, on this radio here, which is the one I'm going to be using, we have a throttle channel that goes from zero to 100. So that would be full reverse, that would be full forward, and that, I get it somewhere in the middle, would be don't go backwards and forwards. That isn't great. What I've done on here is I've done a little bit of mixing and set it up so that by default, the channel value just goes from forward, no movement to full forward. And by pulling the switch on the side, it goes from no movement to full reverse. So it gives me still the full control, but I can use this unsprung control on the radio. Some people might want to use this one instead, and that would be absolutely fine. That would potentially be slightly easier, but my brain is hardwired after all these years to use this as the throttle. And most of the time, 99% of the time, I'm going to be going forwards. The reverse on a model like this is only handy if you manage to get your nose stuck in a load of weeds or something in the place that you're boating around on. What I'll do, I'll share the file for this particular model down below so you can just download it and have a look. So let's just jump onto iNav and let me show you the key things that I've done in iNav apart from the basic setup and calibration of the flight controller so that it's ready to install into the model next time.
So when you flash the flight controller for the very first time, you're going to be given a number of choices. Obviously, the one you want to choose isn't multi-rotor, isn't fixed wing, it's going to be rover and boat. And then the rest of the setup in iNav is very different. But let me show you the couple of things in iNav you're probably going to have to tweak in order to get everything working. First of all, let's go into the uh, standard setup stuff and let me give you a very quick tour. Obviously, I've done the calibration as normal. The mixer, what I did, I load and applied the boat mixer. There's obviously um, boat and rover. And the boat mixer has automatically given me one output for the throttle. Surprise, surprise. And it's also given me one output for the serve, uh, one servo output, which is going to be stabilized yaw, which is going to be for the rudder. Uh, outputs, we're not going to do too much in here, although you'll notice that the motor output by default is sat at 1480, something like that. Uh, that's because this is a reversible ESC, and let me show you how I've got all that set up. And the servo for the rudder is just set at the moment 1500. When we install it into the model, we might have to reverse it here if it's moving in the wrong direction. Uh, presets, we haven't done any of that because it's kind of already kind of set when you go and select boat or rover at the beginning. Ports on this particular model are set like this. So the only thing we've really got is the GPS on UART 6 as it's wired up. Uh, the pins that will be used for UART 3 are being used for the uh, I squared C connections for the external compass, which we've got up here. The configuration tab, a couple of things in here that we need to have a look at. First of all, is obviously we've got the GPS turned on. Uh, we've got stop motors on low throttle turned on because once we return the throttle to zero, we want the wheels to stop running or the prop to stop turning. And that's also where we're going to turn on reversible motors mode. And that is going to mean that again, middle throttle position 1500 is going to mean we don't want to go forwards and backwards and moving away from that middle channel position is going to go either way. By turning that on, that is why in the outputs, our motor is sat at nearly 1500. Just jump back to configuration. Okay. Now, over here, what we have is we have the reversible motor settings. So the neutral will set 1500, and this depends on um, how your ESC is going to work, but I would go for something like that to begin with. So middle channel value 1500 is going to be neutral and then reversible is it's going to kind of start from 50 above that and 50 below that. Let's just save and reboot that. So don't forget it. And that's most of the stuff that we need to worry about in here. A couple of things in the CLI. There's one called max throttle. Now, max throttle by default is 1850. I would say for something like a car, we can probably go up. In fact, you know what? Let's give it a full welly. Let's set. Okay. I would also uh, set the min command. Because obviously with this reversible throttle, we want to be able to go right the way down to a thousand which it is which is good and we also want to make sure that if we're doing anything with navigation that navigation disarm on landing is off because uh, we don't want the model disarming if the boat comes back to us uh, we don't want to then find we can't arm it and, and drive it around, we want to be able to uh, do that. So that all looks good. Let's save all those. Only a couple of things left. Obviously we need the mode tab set up. You're going to need um, arming set for that. Uh, see here we have things like heading hold, we've got the compass, head free, head adjust. We've got nav return to home and we've got nav waypoints. That's it. There's no nav loiter even though you may have seen that in the previous slide that isn't currently available in this particular version i think it's 2.5.2 on here um, unfortunately we only have the ability to get it to uh, 
sail to particular positions or drive to particular positions using a waypoint mission. Again, see my video on waypoint missions in the series. Um, or return to home. And again, extreme caution with that. That will just try and come home in a direct line. If you are the far side of a dinghy or uh, something that it won't be able to get through, it doesn't know about that. And there's no obstacle avoidance in this. It's just going to come straight back and get into big trouble. The only other thing I'm going to do is in the fail safe, I'm going to make sure it does say return to home. You never know. <laughs> it, might, it might be able to get it back to me. And those are the main things that you need to do in iNav. So the vast majority of it is around how to handle the bi-directional ESC. So that, along with the radio settings that I've shared in the link below, should be enough to get us ready to pop it into the boat. So that's probably as long as we can go for on this video. Next one, we'll put the electronics in, do the final setup, and we'll go out and test it on the water. The trick, of course, is to make sure that you have set up the flight controller as you normally would in iNav and have done those changes. The majority of those changes are around the fact that you're going to have some form of reversing ESC and the throttle value is going to be around 1500 when you don't want the boat going backwards or forwards. Obviously, we're going to have to think about how everything's going to fit in the boat, but we can do that next time. And you also know about some of the limitations with the current version of iNav Rover, and hopefully that's going to help if you want to put this in something like a car as well. Again, putting this in a car is going to be almost exactly the same because you've only got the two controls. You particularly have a throttle and you particularly have a steering servo. And this is exactly the same as I've got here. I have a throttle output and I have an output for the rudder. So you can use the same settings that we've just gone through for a Rover 2. So join me next time. We'll put this in the boat and we'll take it out for a spin. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to Author Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.